What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you a system we're implementing here in this, the semi-arid regions of Brazil. So let's check it out. So basically this system is, has two main focus of production. One is this plant here, which is an agave. It's called Cizau in Portuguese and it produces a fiber. This is a very important crop in the region. And then the other element of the system, which will be one of the most important ones, are sheep. Um, so basically, you can see that we've got these rows of sisal, right? They were, they were planted in, in, in these furrows. They're spaced apart at 3.5 meters, and here in the middle we're going to plant grass, which will be used for producing bale, and then in the future for direct grazing. So let's take a look at our row of sisal and see what else we've got here. So the first element is this one, which is mandacaru. It's a native cactus species. It's used for animal fodder as well. Both the plant itself and the fruit, it produces a pretty delicious fruit actually. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty important plant of the region. I'm going to show you around. You can see that it colonizes everywhere. It's that big cactus you can see all around. So it's very well adapted to the, to the system. And you know, cactus, is, they bring lots of water to the system. They, 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 they're photosynthesizing throughout the whole year because they're always green. So all that makes them a, a very important element of the system. And as a, as a bonus, once it grows, we can use it as a live trellis for passion fruit. We've got a native species of passion fruit here in the region and it's it's an important complement for the for the the farmer's income so apart from the mandakaru and the sisal we've got the prickly pear you can see that they're planted really close together and we've got two rows in each furrow we've got two rows of prickly pear so let's take a stroll around so you know we've got mandakaru the mandakaru is spaced every five meters Sisal every one meter and then in between each two plants of sisal we've got three prickly pears on each side of the furrow so take a look this is a pretty high density for sisal it's not the usual density but you know we always like to work with high enough density that I, I will have to thin the plants out in the future because that's going to guarantee more photosynthesis and soil coverage in the beginning of the system whereas if i had planted them already spaced apart in their final distance i would have lots of bare soil in the beginning so you know by planting these in in high density i'm i can cover the soil quickly and you know i'm going to be producing more organic matter doing more photosynthesis and that just feeds more the soil and it improves my system quicker and then what we have also in between these sisal plants are the our trees you can see there is a bit of manure here and you know underneath this manure we've got several different species of trees and annual crops we've got cow pea pigeon pea cotton and then Moringa, Leucaena, Umbu, which is a native species of fruit, which is very, very well adapted to the region. The, the leaves can be used as animal fodder and the fruits are delicious and an important money crop in the region. So we've got all these planted here and as they grow, you know, the, the, the fruit, the, the trees, they're planted every two meters. As they grow, they're going to be thinned out as necessary. But, you know, we always like to work in high density systems because one of the most important things, especially when you're working in such a, uh, in a dry region where the, the growth of herbs and, 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 and plants in general, it's really slow. You know, there's a big, big time of the year where you have almost no rain. So we really want to colonize the place 
at the right time with a decent amount of, of plants in order to have a nice green cover throughout the whole plot. The more we're doing photosynthesis, the more we've got the area covered, the faster our system improves. And this is an important concept that has, we really have to adopt it because people have a hard time understanding the logic behind planting something that will be cut down, you know, in a couple of years perhaps. But, but what, what we have to understand is that by planting them denser together, you're gonna create this, this movement, this cycle of enrichment in the system because you're doing more photosynthesis, you're producing more organic matter. Remember that the soil is fed, the microorganisms of the, of the soil, they are fed both by direct carbon that the plants make available to them and also through organic matter that's deposited on the soil. So we really want to have always those two types of coverage. Green cover, you know, lots of plants, and then dead cover, you know, which is mulch, straw, you know, dead leaves, dead branches and whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about this, this system here. I think it's gonna, it's gonna be looking pretty great soon. And we've, we're expecting rain in the next few days, which is, which is good because rain here is very, very uncertain, but you know, there's lots of clouds around and it's been raining a little bit. So I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, so let me give you a, a nice view of the system. You can see the great, what I really love about planting, you know, in these places, um, these dry places and we're, we're using agaves and and species of cactus is that you know after planting the system is already green so, you know these plants they're gonna take root pretty soon they don't need much water to take root and then suddenly we've got this system which is just doing so much more photosynthesis than than the field before it was planted and soon we're gonna have grass here and, and the trees sprouting so it's gonna look pretty pretty cool and this should be this should be highly productive for the farmer because you know he's gonna have three different products in the same place he's got this the sisal fiber he's got the prickly pear and he's gonna have the pasture obviously this will need intense management because you know everything's so highly dense and and you know the, for for harvesting the the sisal, you know farmers they have to get close to the plant so you know the prickly pear will provide a a a, a barrier for reaching the sisal plant so we're going to have to thin, thin them out in the future but again you know it's good that you plant enough that you have to thin thin them out because by thinning them out by pruning is that's the way for you to enrich a system. Uh, so that's the way to do it. And yeah, I'll keep you updated. You know, once I'm back here, I don't know when I'm coming back, but once I'm back, I'm gonna try to, uh, I'll record more videos to show you the development of the system. And thank you for watching. And remember, always keep it pruned. And that's the way to, to, to improve your systems. So cheers, everyone.